Okay, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Hey, good morning, good morning, people, good morning, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We thank God for another day. So grateful to be alive, so glad to be here. God is good, things are working, things are moving, hallelujah. The Lord is our helper today. I want to welcome everybody, hallelujah, to Pulpit Power, amen, where we celebrate and publish the word of God, encouraging and um, gingering, let's use that word, encouraging and challenging you, challenging all of us to look into the word, to read the word every day, for man shall not live by us alone, man shall not live by bread alone. That the only thing that you can live with and is 100% when you say um, the egg is the complete protein is the word of God. The complete word of God, not just part of it. But man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, every Bible says that all scripture is given to us, inspired by God. Whatever has been written before was written for our learning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for this day. All right, we are going to keep on going. The Lord is our helper. The Lord being our helper today. Amen. We give God praise. So welcome, welcome. And like I said, you can also be a part of pulpit hour. Amen. You can be a part of this. It's so simple. It's so easy to be a part of this. Just, just let me know. And I'll send you the link. And you can join us in publishing the word of God. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good, beloved. I tell you what, God is so good. God is so, so, so good. Amen. So God be the glory for the great things that he has done. So today we are going to kick it off with the book of Ruth. Amen. The book of Ruth. Amen. Follow me in your Bible. All right. Don't go out. Turn this on while you're working, while you're driving. Just listen out. Listen out to the word of God. Amen. In the days when the judges ruled, there was, before we start, all right, let's just, let's say a word of prayer. Amen. Yeah. It's, the prayer is never too much. And pray always, the Bible says, and pray and not faint. Father, we thank you for today. We give you praise and glory. We thank you for your word. We, we just have to come back to the place of prayer because you are the one that enables, you are the one that empowers, you are the one that gives grace. Father, today we are praying, Lord, that you give us grace and empower us today as we continue on this journey of pulpit hour to celebrate your word, to publish your word. Give us the grace to publish, the grace to celebrate. Help us, Lord. Help the readers, help the hearers. Father, bless us today. Let your word be light in, unto us. Let your word be a lamp unto us. Let your word come as a, as a hammer. Let your word come. Let the word that is true, I just saw, let Father, let it begin to work in our lives today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Beloved, let's go. I was ready to go. And now let's actually go. Amen. I do that. Let me do this. Okay, I'm gonna go back here. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were, were Malon and Shilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Opa, and the name of the other Ruth. 
They lived there about 10 years and both Malon and Shilion died so that the women was bereaved of our two sons and a husband. Then she started with the daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab to return from the country of Moab for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she went, she said, she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, go return each of you to a mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find a home, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, no, we will not return. We will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night, I should bear sons. Would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone forth against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to our people and to our gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if even death puts me, parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that, she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was dead because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? So the two of them went on. Is this Naomi? Went on and they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was dead because of them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? She said to them, Do not call me Naomi, but call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has afflicted me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, who, re who returned from the country of Moab and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Now Naomi had a kinsman of a husband, a man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabite, said to, Mo, to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean among the ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find favor. And she said to her, go, my daughter. So she set forth and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. 
and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, and he said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, whose maiden is this? And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, it is the Moabites maid who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, pray, let me glean and gather among the sheaves, the sheaves after the reapers. So she came and she has continued from early morning until now without resting even for a moment. Then Boaz said to Ruth, now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my maidens. Let your eyes be upon the fields which they are reaping and go after them. Have I not charged the young men not to molest you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me when I am a foreigner. But Boaz answered her, all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told me and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. The Lord recompense you for what you have done. A full word be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then she said, you are most gracious to me, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your maid servant, though I am not one of your maid servants. And at the meal time, Boaz said to her, come here and eat some bread and dip your muscle in the wine, in the wine. So she sat beside the reapers and he passed to her patched corn and she ate until she was satisfied and she had some left over. When she arose to glean, when she rose to glean, Boaz instructed his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her. And also put out some from the bundles for her and leave it for her to glean and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned and it was about an effort of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. She showed her mother in law what she had gleaned. And she also brought out and gave her what food she had left over after being satisfied. And her mother-in-law said to her, where did you glean today? And where have you worked? Be blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, the man's name with whom I worked today is Boaz. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, blessed be he by the Lord whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi said unto her, the man is a relative of ours, one of our nearest kin. And Ruth, the Moabite said, besides, he said to me, you shall keep close to my servants till they are finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is well, my daughter, that you go out with these maidens, lest in another field you be molested. So she kept close to the maidens of Boaz, cleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvest, and she lived with her mother-in-law. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek a home for you, that it may be well with you? Now is not Boaz our king's man, with whose maidens you were. See, 
is winnowing in Bali tonight at the threshing floor. Wash therefore and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. But when he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what to do. And she replied, all that you say I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did just as her mother-in-law had told her. And then Boaz, and when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. Then she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay down. At midnight, the man was startled and turned over and behold, a woman at his feet. He said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your maid servant. Spread your skirt over your maid servant, for you are next of kin. And he said, may you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than the first, in that you have not gone after young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you ask. For all my fellow townsmen know that you are a woman of worth. And now it is true that I am a near kinsman, yet there is a kinsman nearer than I. Remain this night and in the morning. If he will do the part of the next of king for you, well, let him do it. But if not, if he is not willing to do the part of the next of king for you, then as the Lord leaves, I will do the part of the next of king for you. Lie down until the morning. So she lay down at his feet until the morning but arose before one could recognize another. And he said, let it not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. Mm. 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 And he said, bring the mantle you are wearing and hold it out. So she held it and he measured out six measures of barley and laid it upon her. Then she went into the city. And when she came to a mother-in-law, she said, how did you fare, my daughter? <laughs> then she told her all that the man had done to her, saying, these six measures of barley he gave to me, for he said, you must not go back empty and dead to your mother-in-law. She replied, wait, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out. But the man will not rest until, uh, will not rest, but will settle the matter today. And Boaz went up to the gate and sat down there. And behold, the next of kin, a womb Boaz had spoken, came by. So Boaz said, turn aside, friend, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took 10 men of the elders of the city and said, sit down here. So they sat down. Then he said to the next of kin, Naomi, who was back from the country of Moab, is selling the parcel of land which belonged to our kinsman Elimelech. So I thought I would tell you of it and say, buy it in the presence of those sitting here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not, tell me that I may. No, for there is no one beside you to redeem it, and I come after you. And he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you are also buying Ruth the Moabites, the Moabites, the widow of the dead, in order to restore the name of the dead to his inheritance. Then the next of King said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I impair my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself. 
for I cannot redeem it. Now, this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging to confirm a transaction. The one drew off a sandal and gave it to the other. And this was the manner of attesting in Israel. <clears throat> so when the nest of kings said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, he drew off his sandal. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought from the hand of Naomi all that belonged to Elimelech and all that belonged to Chilion and to Malon, also Ruth the Marbetes, the widow of Malon. I have bought to be my wife, to perpetuate the name of the dead in his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his native place. You are witnesses this day. Then all the people who were in the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you prosper in Ephrathah and be renowned in Bethlehem. And may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah, because of the children that the Lord will give you by this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife and he went into her and the Lord gave her conception and she bore a son. When the woman, then the women said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord who has not let you this day without next of kin and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Hallelujah. Now these are the daughters of Perez. These are the descendants of Perez. Perez was the father of Israel. Israel of Ram. Ram of Aminadab. Aminadab of Nashon. Nashon of Salmon. Salmon of Boaz. Boaz of Obed. Obed of Jesse and J.C. of David. Hallelujah, the book of Ruth. Hallelujah. And so we continue in the book of Samuel. Glory to God. Right. Anybody in the house? Okay, Samuel. Let's continue in the book of Samuel. The book of Samuel. Samuel chapter one. There was a certain man of Ramath arms of him of the ill country of if of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah the son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zoph, an Ephrathamite. He had two wives. The name of the one was Anna and the name of the other Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from this city 
to, from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phineas, were priests of the Lord. Mm -hmm. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he will give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all our sons and daughters. And although he loved Anna, he would only give one portion because the Lord had closed our womb. And our rival used to provoke her sorely, to irritate her because the Lord had closed our womb. So it went on year by year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore, Anna wept and would not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Anna, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? And am I not more to you than ten sons? Hmm. After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Anna rose. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting at the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of that maid servant and remember me and not forget thy maid servant, but will give to thy maid servant a son, and then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Anna was speaking in her heart, only her lips moved, and her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli took her to be a drunken woman. And Eli said to her, how long will you be drunken? Put away your wine from you. But Anna answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman sorely, tr so, uh, sorely troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have put, been pouring up my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your maidservant as a base woman, for all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered, go in peace and the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have made. And he said, let your make, and she said, let your maid servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went away and ate and her countenance was no longer sad. They rose early. Okay, here you go. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their, to their house at Ramah, and Elkanah knew Anna, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time, Anna conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. And the, name, and the man, Elkanah, and his wife went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Anna did not go up, for she said to her husband, as soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and abide there forever. Elkanah, uh, Elkanah, her husband, said to her, do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up and she took him up with her along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour and a skin of wine. And she brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slew the bull 
and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, oh, my Lord, as you leave, my Lord, I am the woman who was standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I made to him. Therefore, I have lent into the Lord. As long as he lives, he is lent to the Lord. And they worshipped the Lord there. For Samuel 2. Anna also prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derates my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides thee. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord he is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The bowls of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird in on strength. Those who were full and hired themselves out of bread, but those who were hungry have seized hunger. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to shore and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He leads the needy from the harsh heap to make them sit with princes and he inherits a seat of honor. For the pillars of the Lord are the, the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. <laughs> and on them he has set the world. He will gird the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might shall a man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. Against them he will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. Then Elkanah went home to Rama, to Rama, and the boy ministered to the Lord in the presence of Eli the priest. Now the sons of Eli were worthless men. They had no regard for the Lord. The custom of the priest with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servants would come while the meat was boiling with a tree-pronged fork in his hand and he will thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the fork brought up, the priest would take for himself. So they did in, at Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Moreover, before the fat was burned, the priest servant will come and say to the man who was sacrificing, give meat for the priest to roast, <laughs> for he will not accept boiled meat from you, but raw. And if the man said to him, let them burn the fat first and then take as much as you wish, he will say, no, you must give it now. And if not, I will take it by force. Hmm. Thus the sin of the young man was very great in the sight of the Lord. For the man treated the offering of the Lord with contempt. Hmm. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy guarded with a linen effort. And his mother used to take, make him a little roll and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli will bless Elkanah and his wife and say, the Lord gave you children by this woman for the loan which she had, which she lent to the Lord. So they will return to their home. And the Lord visited 
Anna, and she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And the boy Samuel grew in the presence of the Lord. Now Eli was very old, and he heard that his sons were doing to all Israel. And he heard that his sons were doing to all Israel and how they lay with the women who served at the entrance to the tent meeting. <laughs> and he said to them, why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all the people. No, my sons, it is no good report that I hear the people of the Lord spreading abroad. Mm. Hmm. Hallelujah. If a man sins against a man, God will mediate for him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who can intercede for him? But they will not listen to the voice of their father, for it was the will of the Lord to slay them. Now, the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with men. And there came a man of God to Eli and said, Thus the Lord has said, I revealed myself to the house of your father when they were in Egypt, subject to the house of Pharaoh. And I chose him out of the tribes of Israel to be my priest to go up to my altar, to burn incense, to wear an effort before me. I gave to the house of your father all my offerings by fire from the people of Israel. Why then look with greedy eye at my sacrifices and my offerings which I commanded and honor your sons above me by fattening yourselves upon the choicest part of every offering of my people, Israel. Therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel declares, I promise that your house and the house of your father should go in and out before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise shall be highly shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days are coming when I will cut off your strength and the strength of your father's house so that there will, be, there will not be an old man in your house. Then in distress, you will look with envious eye on the prosperity which shall be bestowed upon Israel and there shall not be an old man in your house forever. The man of you whom I shall not cut off from my altar shall be speared to weep out his eyes and grieve his heart. And all the increase of your house shall die by the sword of men. And this which you sh and this shall befall your two sons. Ophany and Phineas shall be the sign to you both of them shall die on the same day. And I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall go do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house. And he shall go in and out before me anointed forever. And everyone who is left in your house shall come to implore him for a piece of silver or a loaf of bread, and shall say, put me, I pray you, in one of the priests' office, that I may eat a muscle of bread. Now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to go dim so that he would not see he was lying down in his place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. Hmm. And Samuel was lying down within the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. 
Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, here am, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel. Called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said to him, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli. And Eli said, and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood forth, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for thy servant hears. And the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel, at which the two ears of everyone that hears it will tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. And I tell him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity which he knew because his sons were blaspheming God. And he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's son, Eli's house, shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, here I am. And Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so. May God do so to you and more also. If you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and he did nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Bathsheba knew that Samuel was established as the prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now, Israel went out to the battle against the Philistines. They encamped at Ebenezer, and the Philistines encamped at Aphek. The Philistines drew up in line against Israel, and when the battle spread, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who slew about 4,000 men on the field of battle. And when the troops came to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord put us to route to route today before the Philistines? Let us bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord here from Sheol, that we that he may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. So the people sent to Sheol and brought from there the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. And cherubim and the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phineas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. 
when the ark of the covenant of god of the lord came into the camp all israel gave a mighty shout so that the earth resounded and when the philistines heard the noise of the shouting they said what does this great shouting in the camp of the hebrews mean and when they learned that the ark of the lord had come to the camp the philistines were afraid for they said our God has come into the camp and they said, woe to us, for nothing like this has happened before. Woe to us. Who can deliver us from the power of these mighty gods? Mm -mm, mm -mm. These are the gods <laughs> who smote the Egyptians with every sort of plague in the wilderness. Take courage and acquit yourselves like men, O Philistines lest you become slaves to the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Acquit yourselves like men and fight. So the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated and they fled every man to his house. And there was a very great slaughter for there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. Mm, mm, mm. And the ark of God was captured. And the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phineas, were slain. A man of Benjamin ran from the battle line and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. When he arrived, Eli was sitting upon a seat by the road watching for his heart trembled for the heart of God. When the man and when the man came into the city and told the news, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the sound of the outcry, he said, what is this uproar? Then the man hastened and came and told Eli. Now Eli was 98 years old hmm, and his eyes were set so that he could not see. And the man said to Eli, I am he who has come from the battle. I fled from the battle today. And he said, how did it go, my son? He who brought the tidings and answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines. And there has also been a great slaughter among the people. Your two sons also, Ophni and Phineas, are dead and the ark of the lord has been captured when he mentioned the ark of god eli fell over backward from a seat by the side of the gate and his neck was broken and he died for he was an old man and heavy he had judged Israel 40 years. Now, his daughter-in-law, the wife of Phineas, was with child, about to give birth. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed and gave birth, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of our death, the women attending her said to her, fear not for you are born a son. But she did not answer or give heed. And she named the child Ichabod saying, the glory has departed from Israel because the ark of God had been captured and because of our father-in-law, and her husband. And she said, the glory has departed from Israel for the ark of God has been captured. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you, Sister Kate. Welcome to Pulpit Hour. You can take over for Samuel chapter five, amen. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Seeing you face to face. <laughs> chapter 5. First Samuel chapter 5. After the Philistines 
had captured the Ark of God. They took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then they carried the Ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. When the people of Ashdod rose early in the, the next day, there was Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the Ark of the Lord. They took Dagon and put him back in his place. But the following morning, when they rose, there was Dagon falling on his face on the, on the ground before the Ark of the Lord. His head and hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold. Only his body remained. That is why to this day, neither the priests of Dagon nor any other who entered Dagon's temple at Ashdod stepped on the threshold. The Lord's hand was heavy on the people of Ashdod and his vicinity. He brought devastation on them and afflicted them with tumults. When the people of Ashdod saw what was happening, they said, the ark of the God of Israel must not stay here with us because his hand is heavy on us and on Dagon our God. So they called together all the rulers of the Philistines and asked them, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They answered, have the ark of the God of Israel moved to Gath. So they moved the ark of the God of Israel. But after they had moved it, the Lord's hand was against that city, throwing it into a great panic. He afflicted the people of the city, both young and old, with an outbreak of tumult. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron. As the ark of God was entering Ekron, the people of Ekron cried out, they have brought the ark of the God of Israel around to us to kill us and our people. So they called together all the rulers of the Philistines and said, send the ark of God, of the God of Israel away. Let it go back to its own place or it will kill us and our people. For death had filled the city with panic. God's hand was very heavy on it. Those who did not die were afflicted with tumult and the outcry of the city went up to heaven. Chapter six, when the ark of the Lord had been in Philistines territory for seven months, the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners and said, what shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us how we should send it back to its place. They answered, if you return the ark of the God of Israel, do not send it back to him without a gift. Wow. By all means, send a gift offering to him. Then you will be healed and you will know why his hand has not been lifted from you. The Philistines asked, what gift offering should we send to him? They replied, five good tumors and five good rats. According to the number of the Philistines rulers, because the same plague has struck both you and your rulers. Make models of the tumors and of the rats that are destroying the country and give glory to Israel's God. Wow. Perhaps he will lift his hand from you and your gods and your land. Why do you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh did? When Israel's God dealt harshly with them, did they not send the Israel out so they could go on their way? Now then, get a new cart ready with two cows that have calved and have never been yoked. Hike. Hitch the cow to the cart, to the, to the cart, but take their calves away and pen them up. Take the ark of the Lord and put it on the cart. And in a chest beside it, put the gold objects you are sending back to him as a gift or as a guilt offering. 
send it on his way, but keep watching it. If it goes up to his own territory towards Bet Shemesh, then the Lord has brought this great disaster on us. But if it does not, then we, we will know that it was not his hand that struck us, but that it happened to us by chance. So they did this. They took two short cows and pitched them to the calf and turned up their calf. They placed the ark of the Lord on the cart, and along with it, the chest containing the gold rats and the model of the tumult. Then the cows went straight up towards Beth Shemesh, keeping on the road and lowering all the way. They did not turn to the right or to the left. The rulers of the Philistines followed them as far as the border of Beth Shemesh. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were harvesting their wheat in the valley. And when they looked up and saw the ark, they rejoiced at the sight. The cart came to the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh, and there it stopped beside a large rock. The people chopped up the wood of the cart and sacrificed the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. The Levites took down the ark of the Lord together with the chest containing the gold objects and placed them on the large rock. On that day, the people of the chairman offered burnt offerings and made sacrifices to the Lord. The five rulers of the Philistines saw all this and then returned that same day to Echo. These are the gold tumors the Philistines sent as a gift offering to the Lord, one each for Ashdod, Gaza, Ash, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron, and the number of the goat rats were according to the number of Philistine towns belonging to the five rulers, the fortified towns with their country villages. The land rock on which the Levites said the ark of the Lord is a witness to this day in the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh. But God struck down some of the inhabitants of the Shemesh, putting 70 of them to death because they looked into the ark of the Lord. The people mourned because of the heavy blow the Lord had dealt them. And the people of the Shemesh asked, who can stand in the presence of the Lord, this holy God, to whom will the ark go up from here? Then they sent messengers to the people of Kiriath Jarim, saying, The Philistines have returned the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up to your town. Everybody's working on the ark. So the men of Kiriath Jarim came and took up the ark of the Lord. They brought it to Abinadab, Abinadab's house on the hill and consecrated. Eliezer's, Eliezer, his son, to guard the ark of the Lord. The ark remained in Kiriath Jarim a long time, 20 years in all. Then all the people of Israel turned back to the Lord. So Samuel said to all the Israelites, If you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then rid yourselves of the foreign gods and the asteroids and commit yourselves to the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. So the Israelites put away their birds and asteroids and served the Lord only. Then Samuel said, assemble all Israel at Mizpah, and I will intercede with the Lord for you. When they had assembled at Mizpah, they drew water and poured it out before the Lord. On that day, they fasted and there, there they confessed, we have sinned against the Lord. Now Samuel was serving as leader of Israel at Mizpah. When the Philistines heard that Israel had assembled at Mizpah, the ruler of the Philistines came up and attacked them. When the Israelites heard of it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. They said to Samuel, do not stop crying out to the Lord our God for us. 
that he may res rescue us from the hand of the Philistines. Then someone took a suckling lamb and sacrificed it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf, and the Lord answered him. While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to engage Israel in battle. But that day, the Lord turned that loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them in such a panic that they rooted, they were rooted before the Israelites. The men of Israel rushed out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines, slaughtering them along the way to a, to a point below Betkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen. He named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far, the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and they stopped invading Israel's territory. Without Samuel's, throughout Samuel's lifetime, the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. The town from Ekron to Gath that the Philistines had captured from Israel were restored to Israel. And Israel delivered the neighboring territory from the hand of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Samuel continued as Israel's leader all the days of his life. From year to year, he went on a circuit from Bethel to Gilgal to Mizpah, judging Israel in all those places. But he always went back to Ramah, where his home was. And there he also held court for Israel, and he built an altar day to the Lord. Chapter 8. When Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leader. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah. And they served at Be Beersheba, but his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gains and accepted bribes and perverted justice. Oh my God, why? So all, el all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when, they, when, but when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord and the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. As they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses and they will run in front of his chariots. So he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive brew and give them to his attendants. He will take a tent of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his official, officials and attendants, your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys. He will take for his own use. He will take a tent of your flocks 
and, and you yourselves will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you, you, you have chosen. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to someone. No, they said, we want a king of ours. Then we will be like other, <laughs> copy, copy. We will be like other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. When someone heard all that the people said, he repeated, he repeated it before the Lord. And the Lord answered, listen to them and give them a king. Then someone said to the, to the Israelites, everyone go back to your, your own town. There was a Benjamite, chapter nine, a man of, of, standing, of standing, whose name was Kish, son of Abiel, the son of Zero, the son of Bekorah, the son of Aphia of Benjamin. Kish had a, a son named Saul, as handsome as, as handsome a young man as could be found anywhere in Israel and he was a head taller than anyone else. Now the donkeys belonging to Saul's father, Kish, were lost. And Kish said to his son Samuel, Saul, take one of the servants with you and go and look for the donkeys. So he passed through the hill country to Ephraim and through the area around Shalisha, but they did not find them. They went on into the district of Shalim, but the donkeys were not there. Then he passed through the territory of Benjamin, but they did not find them. When they reached the district of Zop, 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 Saul said to the servant who was with him, come, let us go back, or our father will stop thinking about the donkeys and start worrying about us. But the servant replied, look, in this town, there is a man of God. He is highly respected and everything he says comes true. Let's go there now. Perhaps he will tell us what way to take. Saul said to his servant, if we go, what can we give the man? The food in our sack is gone. We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? The servant answered, answered him again. Look, he said, I have a quarter of a shekel of silver. I will give it to the man of God so that he will tell us what way to take. Formerly in Israel, if someone went to inquire of God, they would say, come, let us go to the seer because the prophet of today used to be called Sia. Good, Saul said to his servant, come, let's go. So they set out for the town where the man of God was. As they were going up the hill to the town, they met some young women coming out to draw water. And they asked them, is the Sia here? He is, they answered. He's ahead of you. Hurry now. He has just come to our town today, for the people have a sacrifice at the high place. As soon as you enter the town, you will find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. The people will not begin eating until he comes, because he must bless the sacrifice. Afterwards, those who are invited will eat. Go up now you should find him about this time. They went up to the town and as they were entering it, there was someone coming towards them on his way up to the high place. Now, the day before Samuel came, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, anoint him ruler over my people, Israel. He will deliver them from the hands of the Philistines. I have looked on my people, for their cry has reached me. 
When Samuel caught sight of Saul, the Lord said to him, this is the man I spoke to you about. He will govern my people. Saul so approached Samuel in the gateway and asked, would you please tell me where the seer's house is? I am the seer, Samuel replied. Go up ahead of me to the high place. For today you are to eat with me. And in the morning, I will send you on your way and we tell you all that is in your heart. As for the donkeys you lost three days ago, do not worry about them. They have been found. And to whom is all the desires of Israel turned, if not to you and your whole family line? So I answered, but I am, um, but am I not a Benjamite from the smallest tribe of Israel? And is not my clan the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why do you say such a thing to me? Then Samuel brought Saul and his servant into the hall and seated them at the head of those who were invited, about 30 in number. Samuel said to the cook, bring the piece of meat I gave you. So the cook took up the tie with, with what was on it and set it in front of Saul. Samuel said, here is what has been kept for you. Eat, because it was set aside for you. For this occasion, from the time I said, I have invited guests. And Saul dined with Samuel that day. After they came down from the high place to the town, Samuel talked with Saul on the roof of his house. They rose about daybreak, and Samuel called to Saul on the roof, get ready and I will send you on your way. When Saul got ready, he and Samuel went outside together. As they were going down to the edge of the town, Samuel said to Saul, tell the servants to go on ahead of us. And the servant did so, but you stay here for a while so that I may give you a message from God. Chapter 10, then Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him, saying, Has not the Lord anointed you ruler over his inheritance? When you leave me today, you will meet two men near Rachel's tomb and Zesha on the border of Benjamin. They will say to you, the donkeys you set out to look for have been found. And now your father has stopped thinking about them and is worried about you. He is asking, what shall I do about my son? Then you will go on from there until you reach the gate three of Tabor. Three men going up to worship God at Bethel. We meet you there. One will be carrying three young goats, another three loaves of bread, and another a, a, a skin of wine. They will greet you and offer you two loaves of bread, which you will accept from them. After that, you will go to the bear of God, where there is a Philistine outpost. As you approach the town, you will meet a, a procession of prophets coming down from the high place with snares, timbers, pipes, and harps being played before them, and they will be prophesying. The spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into a different person. Once these signs are fulfilled, do whatever your hand finds to do, for God is with you. Go down ahead of me to Giga. I will surely come down to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, but you must wait seven days until I come to you and tell you what you are to do. As Samuel turned to live, as Saul turned to live somewhere, God changed Saul's heart. On all these signs were fulfilled that day when he and his servant arrived at Gibel, a procession of prophets met him. 
the spirit of God came powerfully upon him, and he joined in their prof in their prophesying. When all those who had formerly known him saw him prophesying with the prophets, they asked each they asked each other, "What is this that has happened to the son of Kish?" He saw also among the prophets a man who lived there answered, "And who is their father?" So it became a saying. He saw also among the prophets. After Saul stopped prophesying, he went to the high place. Now Saul's uncle asked him and his servant, where have you been? Looking for the donkeys, he said. But when we saw they were not to be found, we went to Samuel. Saul's uncle said, tell me, what Samuel said to you. Samuel re uh, Saul replied, he assured us that the donkeys have been found, but he did not tell his uncle what Samuel had said about the kingship. Samuel summoned the people of Israel to the Lord at Mizpah and said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought Israel up out of Egypt, and I delivered you from the power of Egypt and all the kingdoms that oppressed you. But you have now rejected your God, who saves you out of all your disasters and calamities. And you have said, no, appoint, no, appoint a king over us. So now present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and clans. When someone had all Israel come forward by tribes. The tribe of Benjamin was taken by lot. Then he brought forward the tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan. A matri clan was taken. Finally, Saul's son of Kish was taken. But when they looked for him, he was not to be found. So they inquired further of the Lord. As the man come here yet? And the Lord said, yes. He has hidden himself among the supplies. They round and brought him out. And as he stood among the people, he was a head taller than any of the others. Samuel said to all the people, do you see the man the Lord has chosen? There is no one like him among all the people. When the people shouted, then the people shouted, long live the king. Samuel explained to the people the rights and duties of kingship. He wrote them down on a scroll and deposited it before the Lord. Then Samuel dismissed the people to go to their own homes. Saul also went to his home in Gibeah and accompanied by valiant men whose hearts God had touched. But some scoundrels said, how can this fellow save us? They despised him and brought him no gift, but Saul kept silent. Did I continue? Did I continue to it from 11? All right, Samuel chapter 11. Nahash the Ammonite went up to besiege Jabesh, Jabesh Gilead, and all the men of Jabesh said to him, make a treaty with us and we will be subject to you. But Nahash, the Ammonites replied, I will make a treaty with you only on the condition that I guard out the, the, the right eye of, oh my goodness, I guard out the right eyes of, Every one of you <laughs> bring disgrace on all, oh my God, <laughs> on all Israel. The elders of Javed said to him, give us seven days so we can send messengers throughout Israel. But if no one comes to rescue us, we will surrender to you. Ooh. When the messengers came to Gibeah of Saul and reported these terms to the people, they all wept aloud. Then, just then, Saul was returning from the fields behind his, his oxen, and he asked, what is wrong with everyone? 
Why are they weeping? Then they repeated to him what the men of Gabesh had said. When Saul heard their words, the Spirit of God came powerfully upon him, and he burned with anger. He took a pair of oxen, cut them into pieces, and sent the pieces by messengers throughout Israel, proclaiming, this is what will be done to the oxen of anyone who does not follow Saul and Samuel. Then the terror of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out together as one. When Saul mustered them at Bezek, the men of Israel numbered 300,000, and those of Judah, 30,000. They told the messengers who had come, say to the men of Jabesh, Jabesh Gilead, by the time the sun is hot tomorrow, you will be re rescued. When the messengers went out and reported this to the men of Jabesh, they were elated. They said to the Ammonites, tomorrow we will surrender to you and you can do to us whatever you like. The next day, Saul separated his men into three divisions. During the last watch of the night, they broke into the camp of the Ammonites and slaughtered them until the heat of the day. Those who survived were scattered so that no two of them were left together. The people then said to Samuel, who was it that asked, shall Saul reign over us? Turn these men over to us so that we may put them to death. Wow. But Saul said, no one will be put to death today. For this day, the Lord has rescued Israel. Then Samuel said to the people, come, let us go to Gigal and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Giga and made Saul king in the presence of the Lord. There they sacrificed fellowship offerings before the Lord, and Saul and all the Israelites had a great celebration. Chapter 12. <laughs> Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to everything you said to me and have set a king over you. Now you have a king as your leader. As for me, I am old and gray, and my sons are here with you. I have been your leader from my youth until this day. Here I stand. Testify against me in the presence of the Lord and his anointed. Whose oars have I taken? Whose donkey have I taken? Whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? From, whom, from whose hand have I accepted a bribe to make me shut my eyes? If I have done any of these things, I will make it twice. You have not cheated or oppressed us, they replied. You have not taken anything from anyone's hand. Samuel said to them, the Lord is witness against you and also is anointed his witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand. He is witness, they said. Then Samuel said to the people, it is the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron and brought your ancestors up out of Egypt. Now then stand here because I am going to confront you with evidence before the Lord as to all the righteous acts performed by the Lord for you and your ancestors. After Jacob entered Egypt, they cried to the Lord for help. And the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought your ancestors out of Egypt and settled them in this place. But they forgot the Lord their God. So he sold them into the hands of Caesarea, the commander of the army of Hazor, and into the hands of the Philistines and the king of Moab, who fought against them. They cried out to the Lord and said, We have seen, we have forsaken the Lord and served the the birds and the asteroids, but now deliver us from the hands of our enemies and we will serve you. Then the Lord sent Jerubal, Jerubel, Barak, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and he delivered you from the hands of your enemies all around you so that you lived in safety. But when you saw that 
Nahash, king of the Amorite, was moving against you, you said to me, no, we want a king to rule over us, even though the Lord your God was your king. Now here is the king you have chosen, the one you asked for. See, the Lord has set a king over you. If you fear the Lord and serve and obey him and do not rebel against his commands, and if both you and the king who reigns over you follow the Lord your God, good. But if you do not obey the Lord and if you rebel against his commands, his hand will be against you as it was against your ancestors. Now then, stand still and see this great thing the Lord is about to do before your eyes. Is it not with harvest now? I will call on the Lord to send thunder and rain and you will realize what an evil thing you did in the eyes of the Lord when you asked for a king. <gasps> then Samuel called on the Lord and that same day the Lord sent thunder and rain. So all the people stood in awe of the Lord and of Samuel. The people all said to Samuel, pray to the Lord your God for your servants so that we will not die. But we have added to all our other sins, the evil of asking for a king. Do not be afraid, Samuel replied. You have done all this evil, yet do, yet do not turn away from the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Do not turn away after useless idols. They can do you no good, nor can they rescue you because they are useless. For the sake of his great name, the Lord will not reject his people because the Lord was pleased to make you his own. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by fa failing to pray for you. And if I will teach you the way that, it, that is good and right, but be sure to fear the Lord and serve him, faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. Yet, if you persist in doing evil, both you and your king will perish. All right, chapter 13. Saul was 30 years old when he became king and he reigned over Israel 42 years. Saul chose 3,000 men from Israel. 2,000 were with him at Michmash and in the hill country of Bethel. And 1,000 were with Jonathan at Geber in Benjamin. The rest of the men he sent back to their homes. Jonathan attacked the Philistines at post at Geber and the Philistines heard about it. Then Saul had the, the trumpet blown throughout the land and said, let the Hebrew hear. So all Israel heard the news. Saul has attacked the Philistines at post. And now Israel has become obnoxious to the Philistines. And the people were summoned to join Saul at Giga. The Philistines assembled to fight Israel with 3,000 chariots, 6,000 chariot, charioteers and soldiers, as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They went up and camped at Michmash, east of Beth Aven. When the Israelites saw that their situation was critical and that their army was hard pressed, they hid in caves and tickets among the rocks and in, pit, in the pits and cisterns. Some Hebrew even crossed the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. So remained at Giga, and all the troops with him were working with fear. He waited seven days, the time set by someone. But someone did not come to Giga, and Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, 
bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul so offered up the burnt offerings just as the, just as he finished making the offerings, Samuel arrived and Saul went out to greet him. What have you done? asked Samuel. Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering and that you did not come at the set time and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, oh, now the Philistines will come down against me at Giga, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compared to offer the burnt offering. You have done a foolish thing, someone said. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, it would have established your kingdom over Israel for all the time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. And has appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Then Samuel left Giga and went up to Gibeah in Benjamin and so counted the men who were with him. They numbered about 600. 600. So, and his son Jonathan and the men with him were staying in Gibeah in Benjamin, while the Philistines camp at Mishma. Raiding parties went out from the Philistines camp in three detachments. One turned towards Ophrah in the vicinity of Shoah, another towards Beth Horon, and the third towards the borderland, overlooking the valley of Shebo, Sheboim, Sheboim, facing the wilderness. Not a blacksmith could be found in the whole land of Israel, because the Philistines had said, otherwise the Hebrews will make sword or space. So all Israel went down to the Philistines to have their plow points, mark touch, axes, and sickles sharpened. The prize was two to thirds of a shekel for sharpening plows points and mark touch, and a third of a shekel for sharpening furks and axes and for repointing gold. So, uh, so on the day of the battle, not a soldier with sword and Jonathan had a sword or spear in their hand. Only Saul and his son Jonathan had them. 14, now a detachment of Philistines had gone out to the to the pass at Michmash. One day, Jonathan, Jonathan, son of Saul, said to his young armor bearer, come, let's go over to the Philistines at post on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Saul was staying on the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree in Migbom. With him were about six hundred men, among whom was Ahijah, who was wearing an effort. He was a, he was a son of Ichabod's brother, Ahitob, son of, of Phineas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh. No one was aware that Jonathan had left. On each side of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistines at first, was a cliff. One was called Bozet and the other Senair. One cliff stood to the north towards Michmash, the other to the south towards Giba. Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, come, let us go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. 
Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Do all, do all that you have, do all that you have in mind, is Amor Bera said. Go ahead. I am with your heart and soul. Jonathan said, Come on then. We will cross over towards them and let them see us. If they say to us, wait, wait there until we come to you, we will stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say, come to us, we will climb up because that will be a sign that the Lord has given them into our hands. So both of them showed themselves to the Philistines at post. Look, said the Philistines, the Hebrews are crawling out of the holes they are hiding in. The men of the apple shouted to Jonathan and his armor bearer, come up to us and we will teach you a lesson. So Jonathan said to his armor bearer, climb up after me. The Lord has given them into the, the hand of Israel. Jonathan climbed up using his hand and feet with, with his armor bearer right behind him. The Philistine fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer followed, and his armor bearer followed and killed behind him. In, in that first attack, Jonathan, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in an area of about half an acre. Then panic struck the whole army, those in the camp and field, and those in the outposts and raiding parties, and the ground shook. It was a panic sent by God. <laughs> Saul's look out at Gibeah in Benjamin, saw the army melting away in all directions. Then Saul said to the men who were with him, muster the forces and see who has left us. When they did, it was Jonathan and his armor bearer who were not there. Saul said to Ahijah, bring the ark of God. At that time, it was with the Israelites. While Saul was talking to the priest, the tumult in the Philistine camp increased more and more. So Saul said to the priest, withdraw your hand. When Saul and all his men assembled and went to the battle. They found the Philistines in total confusion, striking each other with their sword. Those Hebrews who had previously been with the Philistines and had gone up with them to their camp went over to the Israelites who were with Saul and Jonathan. When all the Israelites who had hidden in the hill country of Ephraim heard that the Philistines were on the run, they joined the battle in hot pursuit. So on that day, the Lord saved Israel and the battle moved on beyond Beth Aven. Now the Israelites were in distress that day because Saul had bound the people under an oath, saying, Cursed be anyone who eats food before evening comes before I have availed myself on my enemies. So none of the troops tasted food. The entire army entered the woods and there was honey on the ground. When they went into the woods, they saw the honey oozing out. Yet no one put his hand to his mouth because they feared the oath. But Jonathan had not heard that his father had bound the people with the oath. So he reached out the he reached out the end of the staff that was in his hand and dipped it into the honeycomb. He raised his hand to his mouth and his eyes brightened. Then one of the soldiers told him, your father bound the army under a strict oath saying, cause be anyone who eats food today. That is why the men are faint. Jonathan said, my father has made trouble for the country. See how my eyes brightened. <laughs> when I tasted a little of this honey, 
how much better it would be, it would have been if the men had eaten today some of the plunder they took from the enemies. Would not the would not the slaughter of the Philistines have been even greater? That day, after the Israelites had struck down the Philistines from Bigmash to Ajalon, they were exhausted. They pounced on the plunder and taking sheep, cattle, and calves, they butchered them on the ground and ate them, yeah, even with the blood on it. Together with the blood. Then someone said to Saul, look, the men are sinning against the Lord by eating meat that has blood in it. You have broken faith, he said. Roll a large stone over there at once. Then he said, go out among the men and tell them, each of you bring me your cattle and sheep and slaughter them here and eat them. Do not sin against the Lord by eating meat with blood in it. So everyone brought his oxen that night and slaughtered it there. Then Saul built an altar to the Lord. It was the first time he had done this. Saul said, let us go down and pursue the Philistines by night and plunder them till it's done. And let us not leave one of them alive. Do whatever they replied. But the priest said, let us inquire of the Lord here. So Saul asked God, shall I go down and pursue the Philistines? Will you give them into Israel's hand? But God did not answer him that day. Saul therefore said, come here, all you are leaders of the army, and let us find out what sin has been committed today. As surely as the Lord who rescues Israel lives, even if the guilt, the guilt lies with my son, Jonathan, he must die. But not one of them said a word. Saul, said, Saul then said to all the Israelites, you stand over there. I and Jonathan, my son, will stand over here. Do what seems best to you, he replied. Then Saul prayed to the Lord and the, to the Lord, the God of Israel. Why have you not answered your servant today? If the fault is in, in me or my son, Jonathan, respond with Urim, Urim. But if the men of Israel are at fault, respond with Tomim. Jonathan and Saul were taken by Lot and the men were cleared. Saul said, cast the Lord between me and Jonathan, my son. And Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, tell me what you have done. So Jonathan told him, I tasted a little honey with the end of my staff, and now I must die. Saul so said, may God deal with, with me, be it ever so severely, if you do not die, Jonathan. But the man said to Saul, should Jonathan die? He who has brought about this great deliverance in Israel, never. As surely as the Lord lives, not a hand of his head will fall to the ground. For he did this, for he did this today with God's help. So the man rescued Jonathan and he was not put to death. Then Saul stopped pursuing the Philistines and they withdrew to their own land. After Saul had assumed rule over Israel, he fought against their enemies on each side. Moab, the Amorites, Edom, the king of Zobah, and the Philistines. Wherever he turned, he inflicted punishment on them. He fought valiantly and defeated the Am 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 Amalekites, delivering Israel from the hands of those who had plundered them. Saul's son was Jonathan, Aishvai, and Malik, Malik Shua. The man, the name of his older daughter was Mera. And that, and that of the younger was Mikhail. His wife's name was Ahim Om, daughter of Ahimaz. The name of the commander of Saul's army was Abner, son of Ner. And Ner was Saul's uncle. Saul's, Saul's 
father Kish and Abner, Abner's father Ner, were son of Abel. All the days of Saul, there was bitter war with the Philistines. And whenever Saul saw a mighty or brave man, he took him into his service. 15. Then Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they released them as they came up from Egypt. Now, go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camel and donkeys. So Saul so summoned men and mustered them at Telem, 200,000 200, foot soldiers and 10,000 from Judah. Saul so went to the city of Amalek and set an ambush in, in, in the ravine. Then he said to the Kenites, go away, leave the Amalekites so that I do not destroy you along with them. For you showed kindness to all the Israelites when they came out when they came up out of Egypt. So the, the, the Kenites, Kenites moved away from the Amalekites. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to shore, near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Agag, king of the Amalekites alive and all his people, he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves and lambs, everything that was good. These they were, these they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Then the, the, the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king. I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul. But he was told Saul had gone to Carmel. There he had he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone down to Giga. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, Oh Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instruction. But Samuel said, What then is this blatant of sheep in my ears? What is this lowering of cattle that I hear? Saul so answered, the soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. Enough, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to, to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, although you were once more in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribe of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission saying, go and completely destroy those wicked people. The Amalekites wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pound on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? Well, I did obey the Lord, Saul said, I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agat, their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Giga. But Samuel replied, 
Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than is that for burnt. For rebellion is like the sin of nature and arrogance like the evil of, of idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord, rejected you as king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I have violated the Lord's command and your instruction. I was afraid of the men, and so I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sin and come back to me, so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. As Samuel turned to leave, Saul so caught hold of the hem of his robe, and it tore. Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to one of your neighbors, to one better than you. He who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind. Hmm. For he is not a human being that he should change his mind. Saul so replied, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elder of my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel went back with Saul and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then Samuel said, bring me Agat king of the Amalekites. Agat came to him in chains and he taught Surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so will your mother be childless among women. And Samuel put Agar to death before the Lord at Giga. Then Samuel left for Ramah, but Saul went up to his home in Gibel for sure or for Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he did not go to see Saul again. So Samuel mourned for him, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. Who mm -hmm. to help us? The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, seeing I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If so, hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an ephah with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord and invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me him whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peaceably? And he said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shama pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. 
and Jesse made seven of his sons pass through before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen this. <clears throat> and Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is giving the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Uh -huh. And Saul's servant said to him, behold now, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command your servant who are before you seek out a man who is killed in playing the lure. And when the evil spirit come from, from God is upon you, he will play it and you will be well. Mm -hmm. Entertainment. You will be well. So Saul said to his servant, provide for me a man who can play well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, Behold, I have seen a son of Jason, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing a man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence, and the Lord is with him. Hmm. Therefore, Saul sent messengers to Jason and said, Send me David, your son, who is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a skin of wine and a kid and sent them by David, his son, to Saul. And David came to Saul and entered his service. And Saul loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David remain in my, in my service, for he has found favor in my sight. And whenever the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, David took the lure and played it with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they were gathered at Sokol, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Sokol and Azekar and Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and a span. He had an helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had graves, greaves of bronze about upon his legs, and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. At the shaft of his spear, was like a beaver's wing, beam, a beaver's beam. And as and his peer's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and his shield there went before him. He stood and shouted at the ranks, to the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, 
I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard, heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of an Ephrathite of Bethlehem in Judah named Jesse, who had eight sons. In the days of Saul, the man was already old and advanced in age. In the three elder sons of Jesse had followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next to him, Abinadab, and the third, Shama. David was the youngest. The three oldest followed Saul. But David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For 40 days, the Philistines came forward and took his stand morning and evening. And Jesse said to David, the son, take for your brothers an ephah of this patched corn, patched grain, and these 10 loaves, and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers. Also take these 10 cheeses to the commander of their thousand. See how your brothers bear and bring some token from them. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose early in the morning and left the ship with a keeper and took the provisions and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment as the host was going forth to the battle, to the battle line, shouting the war cry. And Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. And David left the thing in charge of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, behold, the champion of the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. And David heard him. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David said to the man who stood by him, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in the same manner. So shall it be done to the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke to the man. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? And know your presumption and the evil in your heart for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Was it not but a word? And he turned away from him toward another and spoke in the same way. And the people answered him again as before. When the words which David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And so said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth. And he has been a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear, and took a lamb from the flock. I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I cut him by his beard and smote him and killed him. Your servant has killed both lions and bears. 
And these uncircumcised Pharisees shall be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, the Lord would deliver me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to them, go and the Lord be with you. Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword above over his armor and he tried in vain to go, for he was not yet used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with this for I am not used to them. And David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag or wallet. His sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near to David with a shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked, and so David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and comely in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the, of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly may know, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord says, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistines arose and came and drew near to David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and Judah rose with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Akron and the gates of Akron, so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way from Sharahim, as far as Gath and Ikra. And the, Phil and the Israelites came back from chasing the Philistines and they plundered their camp. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. When Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, as your soul lives, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, inquire with son, the street plain is. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, Abner took him and brought him before Saul and the head of the Philistine in his hand, with the head of Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, whose son are you? Young man. And David answered, I am the son of your servant, J.C. the Bethlehemite. When he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was neat to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David, and because he loved him as his own soul, 
because the Lord is also. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him, and David to David, and his armor, and even his sword, and his bow, and his girdle. And David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him. So that Saul set him over the men of war. And this was good in the sight of the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. As they were coming home, when David returned from slaying the Philistines, the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with timbrels, with songs of joy and with instruments of music. And the women sang to one another as they made merry. Saul has slain his thousands, and David is ten thousands. And Saul was very angry. And this thing displeased him. He said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed thousands. And what's more, and he have but the kingdom. And so I David from that day on. And on the morrow, an evil spirit from God rushed upon Saul and he raved within his house while David was playing the lure, as he did day by day. Saul had his spear in his hand. And Saul cast the spear for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David evaded him twice. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. So Saul removed him from his presence and made him a commander of a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David had a hard success in all his undertakings for the Lord was with him. And when Saul saw that he had great success, he stood in awe of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for he went out and came in before them. Then Saul said to David, here is my elder daughter Merab. I will give her to you for a wife. Only be valiant for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul thought, let not my hand be upon him. The leather hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David said to Saul, Who am I? And who are my king's folk, my father's family in Israel, that I should be a son in law to the king? But at the same time, at that time, when Merab Saul's daughter should have been given to David, she was given to Israel, the Mehola fight for a wife. Now Saul's daughter, Michael, loved David and he told Saul and the thing pleased him. Hey, I got somebody, got somebody. Oh. Saul thought, let me give to him that he, let me, Saul thought, let me give her to him that she may be a snare for him and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Therefore, Saul said to David second, to David a second time, you shall be my son-in-law. And so commanded his servants, speak to David in private and say, behold, the king has delighted you and all his servants love you. Now then, become the king's son-in-law. And Saul's servants spoke these words in the ears of David and said, does it not seem to you a little thing to become the king's son-in-law? Seeing I am a poor man and of no repute, and the servant said to Saul, or Saul told him, thus, and so did David speak. Then Saul said, thus shall ye say to David, the king desires no marriage present except a hundred false kings of the Philistines, that he may be avenged of the king's enemies. Now Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. And when his servants told David these words, he pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law before the time had expired. David arose and went along with his men and killed two, <laughs> 100, 200 of the Philistines. And David brought their false kings, which were given in full number to the king, that he might become the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him his daughter 
Michael for a while. But when Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David and that all Israel loved him, Saul was still more afraid of David. So Saul was David's enemy continually. Then the princes of the the princes of the Philistines came out to battle. And as often as they came out, David had more success than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was highly esteemed. Hey, Mikey. Hi, Mikey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm going to ask you to take over, my darling. Okay. So first, uh, after 19. Chapter 19. Yes, right. sir. 1 Samuel chapter 19. And Saul spake to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee, and what I see that I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and spake unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee. And because his works have been to thee ward very good, for he did, did put his life in his hand and slew the Philistine. The Lord wrought a great salvation for, it, for all Israel. Thou showest it and did, didst rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause? And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul sware, As the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showeth him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was war, there was war again. And David went out and fought with the Philistines and slew with them with a great slaughter. And they fled from him. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house with the javelin in his hand. And David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he split a wave of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning, and Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michael led David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image, and it laid in the bed, and a pillow of goat's hair of his bolster, and covered it with a, with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may slay him. And when the messengers were come in, when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed and a pillow of goat's hair of his bolster. And Saul said unto Michael, why hast thou deceived me so and sent away my enemy that he is escaped? And Michael answered Saul. He said unto me, let me go. Why should I kill thee? So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel to Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Nautin, Neoteth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Nioten in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Saul standing at appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they were, and they also prophesied. prophesied. And when it was told uh, Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied. Likewise, and Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. And then went he also to Ramah, and came to a great wall that is in Shishu. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they are at 
Naiho in Ramah. And he went thither to Naiho to Ramah in Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him. And also he went on and prophesied until he came to Naiho in Ramah. And he stripped off all, all of his clothes and prophesied before Samuel like manner, in, in like manner, and laid down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, Is Saul also among the prophets? Saul, 1 Samuel chapter 20. And David fled to Naiho in Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, Where, what have I done? What is my iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father, that he seeketh my life? And he said unto him, God forbid thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will show it me, that he, but, he, but that he will shew it to me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David swore moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he saith, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thou so desireth, I will even do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at, at meat. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at even. If thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asks leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem, his city. For there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he say thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace. But if he be very wroth, then be sure that evil is determined by him. Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be in me iniquity, slay me thyself, for thou showest, shouldest thou bring me to thy father? For why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be it to far be it from me, for if I knew certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee, then would not I tell it to thee? Then David said to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what if thy father answer thee roughly? And Jonathan said unto David, Come, let us go out into the field. And they went out, both of them, into the field. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord, God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow at any time or the third day, and behold, if there be good towards David, and I then send not unto thee and show it to thee, the Lord do so, do so, and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do thee evil, then I will show it to thee and send thee away, that thou mayest go in peace, and the Lord will be with thee, as he hath been with me, as he has been with my father. And thou shalt not only, while yet I live, show me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not, but also that thou not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not with not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one of them, from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again, because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And when thou hast stayed, Slay three days, then thou shalt go down quickly and come to, to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand, and shalt remain by the stone Ezel. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as thou I as I shot at the mark, as though I shot at the mark. And behold, I will send a lad saying, Go find out the arrows. If I expressly say, unto the lad, behold, the arrows on this side of thee, take them, then come, come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt as the Lord liveth. But if I say thus unto the young man, behold, the arrows are beyond thee, go thy way, 
for the Lord has sent thee away. And as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord will be with thee and me forever. So David hid himself in the field. And when the new moon was come, the king sat down to eat meat. And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Ambur sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something hath befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty, and Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor today? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, Let me go, I pray thee, for our family has a sacrifice in the city, and my brother, he has commanded me to be there. And now, if I have found favor in thine eyes, let me get away, I pray thee. And see my brethren, therefore he cometh not unto the king's table. Then Saul's anger was, was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of, of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thy own confusion, and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Thou shalt not be established nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now, send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What hath he done? And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger, and did not eat no meat the second day of the month. For he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David and a little lad with him. And he said unto the lad, run and find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. And when, he, when the lad had come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad and said, it is not. Is not the arrow beyond thee? And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his artillery unto his lad and said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place that, uh, toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept out with, with another until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, go in peace for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord saying, the Lord be between me and thee and between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed. And Jonathan went into the city. First Samuel chapter 21. Then came David to Nob, to a Himchlin, the priest, to a Himlish, the priest. And a Himlish was afraid at the meaning of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimlich, The priest, the king, has commanded me a business and has said unto me, let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now, therefore, what is under thy hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, there is no common bread under my hand, but there is hollowed bread. If the young man have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, of a truth woman have been kept from us about these three days since I came out. And the vessels of the young men are holy and the bread is in a manner common, yea, 
though it were sacrificed this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hollowed bread, for there was no bread there but the shoe bread that has been taken from before the Lord. To put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Do Dohet at Edomite, the shepherd of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahikamesh, and is there, and is there not here under thy hand spear or sword? For I have neither bought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath and the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take it, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it to me. And David arose and fled that day from the fear of Saul, for the fear of Saul, and went to Ashi, the king of Gath. And the servants of Ashi said unto him, It is not this David, the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, but saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up his words in the heart and was swore and was sore afraid of Ashi, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them and fiend himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the, on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall upon him, upon his beard. And said Ashi unto his servants, Lo, ye see this man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of madmen? Uh, have I need of madmen that ye have brought his fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall his fellow come into my house? First Samuel chapter 22. David therefore departed thence and to escape to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down to thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented, gathered their, themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men. And David went thence to Mizpeh of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother pray thee. Come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the whilst David was, was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart and get thee unto the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the, fo into the forest of Hearth. And when Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him now saw a boat in Gavi under a tree in Raman, having a spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Then Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamin, Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards, and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds? that all of you have conspired against me, and there is none that showeth me that my son hath made a league with the son of Jesse, and there is none of you that is sorry for me, or showeth unto me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as at this day. Then answered Dog of at the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahishlamite, the son of At Atu, and the, he inquired of, of the Lord for him and gave him victuals and gave him the, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Achishabeth, the priest, the son of Atu, and, his, and, his, and all of his father's house 
the priests that were in Nob, and they came all of them to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Atu. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me? Thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me, to lie in wait, as at this day. Then Elisha met, answered the king, and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thy house? Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servants, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of all this, least lesser or more. And the king said, Thou sh shalt surely die, and it, at Eglamesh, thou and all thy father's house. And the king said unto the footmen that stood about him, Turn and slay the priest of the Lord, because their hands also is with David, and because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. For the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priest of the Lord. And the king said to Dog, Turn down and fall upon the priest. And Dog the Etamite turned, and he fell upon the priest and slew him on the day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. And Nob, the city of the priest, smote, and he and with the edge of the sword, both men and women and children and suckling, ox and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Ahikamesh, the son of Atu, named Abidinar, escaped and fled after David. And Abithar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priest. And David said and unto Abithar, I knew it that day when Dog the Etamite was there, that he would surely that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasion the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Ab Abdi thou, abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be safeguarded. Saul, first Saul chapter 23. They then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Keilah, and they rob the thresh the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid that here in Judah, how much more than if we come to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord yet again, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go, go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into thy hands. So David and his men went to Keilah and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. And it came to pass when Abathar, the son of Elitramesh, fled to David to Keilah, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. And it was told Saul that David come to Keilah and Saul said God had delivered him into my hand for he is to shut in by entering into a town that had gates and bars and Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men and David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him and he said to Abathar the priest being hither the ep uh, bring hither the ep uh, the epoch. Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant has certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the man of Keilah deliver me up into the hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then said David, will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, they will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, which were around 600, arose and departed out of Keilah, and they went whether so they, they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah. 
and he forbear to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Zippi. And Saul sought him every day, and God delivered him out of his hand. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness in Zippi in a wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David in the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king of Israel over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, and that, that also Saul my father knoweth, and that and they too made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. Then came up the Zippites to Saul uh, uh, to Saul to Gabath, saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in strongholds in the woods? In the hill of Hak of Hak Hakila, which is one of the south, uh, the one south of Jeshamon. Now, therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hands. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord, for ye have compassion on me. Go, I pray you, prepare yet, and know, and see his place where he, his heart is, and who has seen him there? For it is told me that he dealeth very subtly. See therefore, and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hideth himself, and come ye again to me with the certainty, and I will go with you, and it shall come to pass. If he be in the land, that I will search him out throughout all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and went to Zippi before Saul, but David and his men were in the wilderness of, of Mahon, in the plain of the south of Jeshaw. Saul also and his men went to seek him, and they told David, wherefore he came down unto a rock and abode in the wilderness of Mahon. And when Saul heard that he pursued after David in the wilderness of Mahon, and Saul went to the side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain, and David made haste to get away for the fear of Saul. For Saul and his men compassed David and his men around about to take them. But there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste, haste thee, and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing David, and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called the place Shelamonkthi. And David went up from hence and dwelt in the strongholds in Egath. 1 Samuel chapter 24. And it came to pass, when Saul was returned from the following Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness in Ega. Then David, then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of wild goats. And he came to the Shepcots by the way where a cave, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men, men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thy enemies into thy hands, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off his skirt of Saul's robe, privily and it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt and it and he said unto his men the lord forbid that i should do this thing unto my master the lord's anointed to stretch forth my hand against him seeing he is the anointed of the lord so david stayed his servants with these words and, stuff, and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David swooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt? 
Behold, this day thy eyes have seen how the Lord, that the Lord has delivered thee into day into my hand in the cave, and some bad me some some bad me kill thee, and some bade me kill thee, but my eyes spared thee, and I said I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see ye, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in the in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither either no, evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against thee. Ye thou huntest my soul to take. The Lord's judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but my hand shall not be unto thee. As saith the proverb of the ancient wickedness proceeded from the wicked, but my hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel? Come out. After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog, after a flea. The Lord therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my case, and deliver me out of thy hand. And if it came to pass, when David had made a, an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son, David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast showed this day how thou how that how that thou hast dealt with me, for much as as the when the Lord had delivered me into thy hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord rewarded thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now behold, I know well that surely that, that, that thou, thou shalt surely be king, and the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thy hand. Swear now, therefore, unto me by the Lord, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that thou wilt not destroy my hand out of the father's house. And David swore unto Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men got him got them up unto the hold. Chapter 25. Then Saul died, then Samuel died. And the Israelites gathered together and lamented for him and buried him at the home, at his home in Ramah. And David arose and went out to the wilderness of Paran. Now there was a man in Mahon whose business was in Carmel. It was in Carmel, and the man was very rich, and he had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats, and he was sharing his sheep in Carmel. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife was Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance. But the man was harsh and evil in his doings. He was of the house of Caleb. When David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was, share, was sharing his sheep, David sent 10 young men, and David said to the young men, go up to Carmel, go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall say to him, whose lives, who lives in prosperity, peace be to you, peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. Now I have heard that you have shears. Your shepherds were with us, and we did not hurt them, nor was there anything missing from them all the while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you. Therefore, let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a feast day. Please give what's, whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son David. So when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. Then Nabal answered, David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed from my shears and give to it to men when I do not know where they are from? So David's young men turned on their heels and went back, and they came and told him all these words. Then David said to his men, Every man grid on, on his sword. So every man gritted on his sword, and David also gritted on his sword, and about 400 men went with David. 
and 200 stayed with the supplies. Now, one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, and he reviled them. But the men were very good to us, and we were not hurt, nor did we miss anything as long as we uh, accompanied them. When we were in the fields, they were a wall of us, both by day and night. All the time we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know and consider what you will do, for harm is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves of bread and two skins of wine, five sheep already dressed, five shares of roasted grain, and 100 clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and loaded them on donkeys. And she sent to her servant, and she sent, and she said to her servant, "Go on before me. See, I am coming after you." But, but she did not tell her husband Nabal. So it was as she rode on the donkey that she went down under cover of the hill, and there were David, and there, there were David and his men coming down toward her, and she met them. Now David said, said, surely in vain I have protected all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that belongs to him, and he has repaid me evil for good. May God do so, and more also to the enemies of David, if I leave one of the male of all, of all who belong to him by morning light. Now when Abigail said, saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David, and bowed down to the ground. So she fell at his, at his feet and said, O oh me, my Lord, on me, let this iniquity be. And please let your maidservant take, speak in your ears and hear the words of your maidservant. Please let not my Lord regard this scoundrel Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your maidservant, be not see the young man, did not see the young man of my Lord, whom you sent. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now then let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabal. And now this present which that your maidservant has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men who follow that, my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your, of your maidservant, for the Lord will certainly make of my Lord an enduring house, because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord, and evil is not found in, throughout your days. Yet a man has risen to pursue and seek your life, but the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living of the living with the Lord your God. And the lives of your enemies he shall sling out as from the pocket of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the Lord has done what has done for my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed your ruler, you ruler over Israel, that this will be no grief to you, nor offense of, the, of heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord has avenged himself. But when the Lord has dealt with, well with my Lord, then remember your maidservant. Then David said to Abigail, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me. And blessed is your advance, and blessed are you, because you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed and from avenging myself with my own hand. For indeed, as the Lord God of Israel lives, who has kept me back from hurting you, unless you have hurried and come to meet me, Surely by morning light, no males would have been left of Nabal. So David received from her hand what she had brought him and said to her, go up in peace to your house. See, I have, I have heeded your voice and respected your person. Now Abigail went to Nabal and there he was holding a feast in his house, like a, the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry with him for he was very drunk. Therefore, she told him nothing, little or much until morning light. So it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal and his wife had told him these things that his heart died within him and he became like stone. Then it happened after about 10 days, the Lord struck Nabal and he died.
So when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and has kept his servant from evil. For the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal on his own head. And David sent and proposed to Abigail to take her as his wife. When the servants of David had come to Abigail at Carmel, they spoke of her saying, David sent us to you to ask you to become his wife. Then she arose, bowed her face to the earth and said, here is your maidservant, a servant to wash your feet of the servants of my Lord. So Abigail rose to haste and rode on her donkey, attended by five of her maidens, and she followed the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Anionom of Jezreel, and so both of them were his wives. But Saul had given Michael, his daughter, David's wife, to Patel, the son of Lashi, who was from Galilee. All right, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Sister Kate. Unmute yourself. Chapter 26. The Ziphites went to Saul at Gibeah and said, Is not David hiding on the hill of Hakila, which faces Jashimon? So Saul went down to, to the desert of Zip with, the, with his 3,000 select Israelite troops to search them for David. Saul made his camp beside the road on the hill of Aquila, facing Jashimon. But David stayed in the wilderness. When he saw that Saul had followed him there, he sent out scouts and learned that Saul had definitely arrived. Then David set out and went to the place where Saul had camped. He saw where Saul and Abner, son of Ner, the commander of the army, had laid, laid down. Saul was lying inside the camp with the army encamped around him. David then asked Ahimelech, the Hittite, and Abishai, son of Zeruah, Joab's brother, who will go down into the camp with me to Saul. I will go down with you, said Abishai. So David and Abishai went to the army by night, and there was Saul lying asleep inside the camp with his hair stuck in the ground near, near his head. Abner and the soldiers were lying around him. Abisha said to David, today God has delivered your enemy into your hands. Now let me pin him to run with one trust of the spear. I won't strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, he shall, he, he said, the Lord himself will strike him or his time will come and he will die or he will go into the battle and perish. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Now get the spare and water jar that are near his head and let's go. So David took the spare and the water jar near Saul's head and they left. No one saw or knew about it, nor did anyone wake up. They all, they were all sleeping because the Lord had put them into a deep sleep. Then David crossed over to the other side of the earth and stood on top of the hill some distance away, there was a wide space between them. He called out to the army and, and to Abner, son of Ner, aren't you going to, to answer me, Abner? Abner replied, who are you? Who calls to the king? Then he said, you are a man, aren't you? And who is like you in Israel? Why didn't you guard your lord, the king? Someone came to destroy your lord, the, the king. What? you have done is not good. As surely as the Lord lives, you and your men must die because you did not guard your master, the Lord's anointed. Look around you, where are the king's pair 
and water jug that were near his head. Saul recognized David's voice and said, is that your voice, my, David, my son? David replied, yes, it is. My Lord, the king. And he added, why is my Lord pursuing his servant? For what have I done? And what, and what wrong am I guilty of? Now let my Lord, the king, listen to his servant's words. If the Lord has incited you against me, then may he accept an offering. If, however, people have done it, may they be cursed before the Lord. They have driven me today from my share in the Lord's inheritance and have said, go serve other goods. Now, do not let my blood fall to the ground, far from the presence of the Lord. The king of Israel has come out to look for a flea, as one hunts a, a, a partridge in the mountains. Then Saul said, I have sinned. Come back, David, my son, because you consider my life precious today. I will not try to harm you again. Surely I have acted like a fool and have been terribly wrong. Here is the king's pay. David answered, let one of your young men come over and get it. The Lord rewarded everyone for their the, world, the, the Lord rewards everyone for their righteousness and faithfulness. The Lord delivered you into my hands today, but I will not lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. As surely as I value your life today, so may the Lord value my life and deliver me from all trouble. Then Saul said to David, may you be blessed. David, my son, you will do great things and surely triumph. So David went on his way and Saul returned home. 27, but David thought to himself, one of these days I will be destroyed by the hands of Saul. The best thing I can do is to escape to the land of the Philistines. Then Saul will give up searching for me anywhere in Israel and I will slip out of his hand. So David and the 600 men with him left and went over to Akish, son of Maok, king of Gath. David and his men settled in Gath with Akish. Each man had, had his family with him, and David had his two wives, Ahinoam of Jaziri and Abigail of Carmel, the widow of Nabal. Nabal. When Saul was told that David had fled to Gath, he no longer searched for him. Then David said to Akish, if I have found favor in your eyes, let a, a place be assigned to me in one of the country towns that I may live there. Why should your servant live in the royal city with you? So on that day, Akish gave him Ziglag, and it has belonged to the king of Judah ever since. David lived in in, in Philistine territory a year and four months. Now David and his men went up and raided the, the Geshurites, the Gersites and the Amalekites. From ancient times, these people had lived in the land extending to shore and Egypt. Whenever David attacked an area, he did not leave a man or woman alive, but took sheep, and catches, donkeys, and camels, and clothes. Then he returned to Akish. When Akish asked, where did you go raiding today? David would say, against the Negev of Judah, or against the Negev of Jeremiah, or against the Negev of the Canaanites. Canaanites. He did not leave a man woman alive to be brought to Gath, for he thought they might inform on, inform on us and say, this is what David did. And such was his practice as long as he lived in Philistine territory. Akish trusted David and said to himself, he has become so obnoxious to his people, the Israelites, that he will be my servant forever. In those days, 
The Philistines gathered their forces to fight against Israel. Achish said to David, you must understand that you and your men will accompany me in the army. David said, then you will see for yourself what your servant can do. Achish replied, very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. Now Samuel was dead and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in his own town of Rama. Of Rama. Saul had expelled the mediums and spirits, spiritists from the land. The Philistines assembled and came and set up camp at Shunem. Why Saul gathered all Israel and set up camp at Gibo? When Saul saw the Philistines' army, he was afraid. Terror filled his heart. He inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams or urines or prophets. Saul then said to his attendants, find me a woman who is a medium, so I may go and inquire of her. There, in, there is one in Endor, they said. So Saul disguised himself, putting on other clothes. And at night, he and two men went to the woman. Consult a spirit for me, he said, and bring up for me the one I named. But the woman said to him, surely you know what Saul has done. He has cut off the mediums and spirits from the land. Why have you set a trap for my life to bring about my death? Saul so, so swore to her by the Lord, as assuredly as the Lord lives, you will not be punished for this. Then the woman asked, whom shall I bring up for you? Bring up Samuel, he said. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out at the top of her voice and said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Don't be afraid. What do you see? The woman said, I see a ghostly figure coming up out of the earth. What does he look like? He asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up, she said. Then Saul knew it was so, uh, Samuel, and he bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? I am in great distress, Saul said. The Philistines are fighting against me and God has departed from me. He no longer answers me either by prophets or by dreams. So I have come on you to tell me what to do. Samuel said, why do you consult me? Now that the Lord has departed from you and become your, mm, now that the Lord has departed from you and become your enemy, the Lord has done what he pre predicted through me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, to David because you did not obey the Lord or carry out his fierce word against the Amalekites. The Lord has done this to you today. The Lord will deliver both Israel and you into the hands of the Philistines. And tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Immediately Saul so fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of Samuel's words, his strength was gone, for he had eaten nothing all that day and all that night. When the woman, woman came to Saul and saw that he was greatly shaken, she said, look, your servant has obeyed you. I took my life in my hand and did what you told me to do. Now, please listen to your servant and let me give you some food so you may eat and have the strength to go on your way. He refused and said, I will not eat. But his men joined the woman in urging him and he listened to them. He got up from the ground and sat on the couch. The woman had a fattened calf at the house, which she butchered at once. She took some flour, kneaded it 
and baked bread with, without yeast. Then she set it before Saul and his men, and they ate. That same night, they got up and left. 29. The Philistines gathered all their forces at Aptek, and Israel camped by the spring of Jezreel. As the Philistines' rulers marched with their units of hundreds and thousands, David and his men were marching at the rear with Achish. The commanders of the Philistines asked, What about these Hebrews? Achish replied, Is this not David? who was an officer of Saul, king of Israel. He has already been with me for over a year. And from the day he left Saul until now, I have found no fault in him. But the Philistines commanders were angry with Akit and said, send the man back that he may return to the place you assigned him. He must not go with us into the battle or he will turn against us during the fighting. How better could he bring his regain his master's favor than by taking the heads of our own men. Isn't this the David they sang about in their dances? Saul had <laughs> slain his thousand and David his ten thousand. So Akish called David and, and said to him, as surely as the Lord lives, you have been reliable and I would be pleased to have you serve with me in the army. From the day you came to me until today, I have found no fault in you, but the rulers don't approve of you. Go in peace. Do nothing to displease the Philistine ruler. But what have I done, asked me? What have you found against your servant from the day I came to you until now? Why can't I go and fight against the enemies of my lord, the king? Mm -hmm. Akish answered, I know that you have been, uh, we have been as pleasing in my eyes as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the Philistines' commanders have said, he must not go up with us into battle. Now get up early, along with your master's servants who have come with you and leave in the morning as soon as it is light. So David and his men got up early in the morning to go back to the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Israel. David and his men reached Ziglag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the ne Negev and Ziglag. They had attacked Ziglag and burned it and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziglag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured I heard Noam and of Jazir and Abigail, the widow of Nabah of Camel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Bring me the effort. Abita brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. David and the 600 men with him came to Besoa Valley, where some stayed behind. 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley, but David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. They found an Egyptian in a field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat, part of a keg of pressed figs and two kegs of raisins. He ate and was revived, for he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. 
David asked him, who do you belong to? Where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me where I became, when I became ill three days ago. We, we raided the Negev of the Keritites, some territory belonging to Judah, and the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag. David asked him, can you lead me down to this wedding party? He answered, swear to me before, before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master and I will take you down to them. He led David down and there they were scattered over the countryside, eating, drinking and revering because of the great amount of thunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day. And none of them got away, except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had, they had taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks and herds, and his men drove them ahead of the other livestock, saying, this is David's plunder. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow him and who were left behind at Beshwar Valley. He came out to meet, they came out to meet David and the men with him. As David and his men approached, he asked them how they went. But all the evil men and the troublemakers among David's followers said, because they did not do out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, every man may take his wife and children and go. David replied, no, my brothers, you must not do, do that with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. Who will listen to what you say? The share of the, of the man who stayed with the supplies is to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All we, all we share alike. David made this a status, an ordinance for Israel from that day to this day. When David reached Ziegler, he sent some of the plunder to the elders of Judah, who were his friends, saying, here is a gift for you from the plunder of the Lord's enemy. David sent it to those who were in Bethel, Ramoth, ne Negev, and um, Jatir, to those in Aror, Siphomoth, Eshtemoa and Ram Rakal, to those in the towns of the Jeramelites Jera and the Kenites, to those in Homer, Boashan, At 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 Hath and Hebron, and to those in all the other places where he and his men had roamed. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell dead on Mount Gibor. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Machishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him critically. Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and run me through, or these uncircumcised pharaohs will come and run me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer was terrified and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died with him. 
So Saul and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men died together that same day. When the Israelites among the valley and those across the Jordan saw that the Israelite, Israelite army had fled and that Saul and his sons had died, they abandoned their towns and fled. And the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons falling on Mount Gibor. They cut off his head and stripped off his armor. And they sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news in the temple of their idols and among their people. They put his armor in the temple of the asteroids and fastened his body to the wall at Bethshan. When the people of Jabesh, Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their valiant men marched through the night to Bethshan. They took down the body of Saul and his sons from the, from the wall of Bethshan and went to Jab Jabesh where they burnt them. Then they took their bones and buried them under a tam tamaris tree at Jabesh and they fasted seven days. Uh, amen. Oh my amen. God. That is so beautiful. Yes, we have come to the end of the book of 1 Samuel. We did the book of Ruth in 1 Samuel today. Amazing. Thank you all for joining us today. Please like, share, and tag somebody on this. And I'm going to try and put it on YouTube today too, so you can always go to YouTube. And like I said, God gave the commandment and great was the company of those that published it. So join us and publish the word of God. So we're going to celebrate the word of God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, y'all. Um, I have two things coming up. I have joy, marriage, five things that is coming up. And I also have, we have not so learned Christ, um, which is uh, actually take from the woman at the well and also from Matthew chapter five. And I said, if you want to really be a follower of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus, you need to get a notebook. Take up your Bible. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. That is it. From Genesis to Revelation, everything is in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. This is where Jesus actually sat down and took time. The Bible says he taught so when Jesus is teaching, I want to listen. I want to take notes. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. I think I've encouraged, and I'll keep encouraging it for as many as will hear it. Now, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. If you're not living, if we are not living our lives by the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, then we're not followers of Jesus. And Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is where Jesus took time. Talked about, starting from Genesis, talked about in the beginning it was not so. He thought about in his time, the time he was living, and he also went back or he went forward into the time that we are, telling us to be careful that we be not deceived. Also telling us about his second coming. He already told us it's going to be like lightning. So Matthew 5, 6, and 7, I want to encourage you again. Uh, please, please, please. If you're a chemistry student, a physics student, you got to read the textbook if you want to pass that exam. And we have to, Jesus said, believe on me as the scriptures have said. Hallelujah. So we're going to start the celebration right now. I'm super excited. Always, always about the word of God because there's nothing that we see that was not made by the word of God. Everything was made by the word, for the word, with the word. Hallelujah. So who's going to start the celebration today? Mikey, you want to give it a shot? What are you going to celebrate today? I just want to celebrate the okay. Sister K wanna go for faithfulness of God, the, the, the loving kindness of God, despite the fact that the, the children of Israel disobeyed him, he still has a way of bringing them back to him because he has, he's anointed, he's chosen people. So he felt very disappointed when they said they wanted a king. But even the people. The way they acted, they see that God has always been with them, directing them, telling them when to go to 
to battle, why not to go, and all that. But yet, they were not satisfied. Human mm -hmm. beings are never satisfied. They still wanted a king like the, just like the other people. Yeah. Just like the other people. But they, they refused to see the father that they are special. They refuse to recognize the father. They are very special people. And my heart goes out to show such a handsome king, a young king. The first time he, he, he didn't wait for, for, for somewhere to come. He did it, this thing, he did it twice. He didn't wait for someone to tell him to go. He went by himself. The second time again, God pardoned him. God still said, okay, this time, go and kill the Amalekites, kill all of them, all of them. Even the first, is the first enemy, who is the king, he spared that one. For what? I know that when, they go, when kings go to battle, it's the king that they first kill. But he mm -hmm. kept the king. So do what with him? I don't know. And then they now, the, the, the fattest cow, the this and that. Why should they be killing cow when he, he, okay. he killed the children, he killed every other, but he not kept cow for himself, to enrich himself or what? After I started saying it's because he wants to make sacrifice, which is not so. So that I also like him to the, the present day Christianity. When um, the, the man of God will say, we're fasting for three days, we're going to fast for two or three days or for a week. Um, don't eat, pray. But a lot of us don't even bother nowadays. When, whether we like we fast or we don't fast, once, anytime we like, we just eat. We don't follow anything. We say ah, fasting is, uh, you know. But see the reaction of uh, Saul's uh, soldiers when they, um, Saul told them not to eat anything. But when Jonathan ate, because Jonathan didn't know, he wanted to kill Jonathan. And then I said no because Jonathan brought victory to them. So that was what God I um God ministered to me that God is even so serious, very serious with the instructions He gives to the servants to, to us. But mm -hmm. most of us just take it lightly and say, Oh, grace, grace is working for us. No. All right, Michael, you want to give it a Go ahead. Um, well, I, what I got mainly out of uh, today's uh, readings was just the, the, the difference between obedience and disobedience. Like um, our, our mommy here was talking about that, you know, Saul, he was just not obedient. He was just not obedient. And, <laughs> and that's just, you know, that's just the, the, the reality of it, that, that if we love God, that then we will obey God and we won't try to, you know, go things our, our own way. And even then, you know, he was still anointed by God. He was the king. He was the king, you know, and people, you know, they treated him well. And, and I'm sure that if God, if, if Saul, just like, like God says in his word, if you would turn from his evil ways, yes, 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 yes. you know, it would have been, it would have been, he would have he been like, okay, well, yo, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But Saul never turned. And God knew from the beginning. He knew from the very beginning. And so, you know, I, I, uh, I know that God says that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. So let's pray that, you know, that, you know, we will, we will turn from our ways. We will go forth, hey. we will obey God. And hey. um, the second thing that I, I got out of it was just the sovereignty of God. And, um, you know, our pastor, you know, in our, at our church, Victor Tabernacle talks a lot about the sovereignty of God and just how, you know, David, David wasn't like perfect. You know, definitely wasn't perfect. He had two wives, like he was doing some things sometimes that weren't great, but God had his sovereignty upon his life. And, and you know, and the thing is, is that God cared a lot more about David's character and the fact that he was obedient, the fact that he did do the things of God more than the times that, you know, he did not. And, and God just, and he just had favor with people. He had a lot of favor with people. And so God is not asking us to be, to come to him perfect because he said he's going to make us perfect, you know, but he just wants us to see, he wants to see our character. He wants us to make the right decisions, make the right choices. 
and uh, yeah. you know that that he will bless us and keep us so that's what i i got out of the word today awesome oh my god you just started everything i oh my god you see that's when the word of god whether it's in japan or in korea or in south america or in south africa or america it's the same word of god the word of god doesn't change for our culture so you are where you are we just read the word and we got the same thing so i'm going to start with the life of david and saul versus you said something that is so cool with that with that here that one thing that that um that is needed is repentance Saul did not one thing that was needed in the life of Saul was repentance that was actually the difference a major difference which is you talk about the character of date a major difference between Saul and David was repentance when David seen in the case of um Bathsheba what happened when Nathan came to him, he felt, David, you're the man. David, oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, repentance. Every time David's sin was brought before him, he did not make excuses. He did not make excuses. Saul was a master excuser. So if you're either a master excuser, your excuse ain't going to save you. He didn't save Saul. Adam also made excuses. He did not save him. He made us the devil. Everything is the devil. Blame to the devil. Blame your daughter, the devil, and your wife. Okay, go ahead. Keep blaming it. Keep blaming your failure on your parents. Blame the fact that you're not living well. Blame it on your parents. Just keep, keep on. That is the spirit of Saul. Blame everything. It is the people, the people, the people. David never said the people. And you will see a case when David came back from, when they came back from after they, they, they came back to Ziglag. On their way, what does David do? Even though the people, the people say, David, we are not going to give them people 200 people. We're not giving them anything. David did not allow the people influence him. David said, no, the people that were weak and could not go, we're going to get the same portion. See, so you said something so key, the character. God told um, Samuel, say, I look on the inward and not outward. He saw David's heart. He knew David's heart. So if you're out there, David pray a prayer that I pray for myself. I love that prayer, Psalm 5110. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus, you, you better stop praying a prayer for yourself. He said, create me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Because when man fails, heart became hearted. And as we continue to sin and sin, our hearts have to become hearted. The spirit, we have a wrong spirit. So now we need to let, he said, let the spirit of Christ dwell in us richly. Light means there's going to be a resistance. Paul said, the things I would love to do, I cannot do them. It's those things I don't want to do that I do. So we have this, there has to be a letting. We have to let that spirit of Christ. That spirit of Christ is not just going to deal, come and dwell in us richly just like that. Uh -uh. You cannot, oh, I'll, I'll come to the point of confession, decreeing and declaring. I will come to that because that's actually my first celebration here. You know, he says, let, there is a letting. Yeah, because there is a resistance, just like when you want to you know, to lose some weight, go to the gym, build up some muscle, there's going to be a resistance. So there's a resistance between that wicked spirit, that alternative spirit that we got with the fallen man and the spirit of Christ that wants to come and dwell in us richly. So we have to pray. J.B. prayed, creating me a clean heart, to renew the right spirit, that spirit that was when God created man. God say he made man in his own image and likeness. But man lost that spirit when man sinned. And so when Jesus died on the cross, his skin was broken so that there, there will be wholeness. You know, we always say that thing, uh, by his stripes we are healed. He's not talking about bodily healing, you know, because bodily healing and your spirit being healed. No, he's talking about we being connected back to God by his spirit, by his, by his, his flesh. By his stripes, his stripes were broken, his, his body was broken. Remember, let me go back again to the temple when Jesus hung on the cross. What happened to the temple? Curtain, he came and tore into two. What happened in the Garden of Eden? Adam lost connection with God. The relationship between Adam and God was broken. So, when God told the children of Israel to build the temple, the holiest of holies was only for the eyes, nobody else could enter. Nobody else could enter that. So because man has sinned, but when Jesus died on the cross, that relationship that was broken in the Garden of Eden, God made it all again. So that's the wholeness he's talking about, where we are reconnected by God, where you and I now can go into the Holy of Holies. The Bible said that we, are, we can boldly come into his presence. Before we could not, Adam ran away. 
Once the, it was broken, Adam could not stand in the presence of God. No way, you cannot. We cannot be Jesus. Now he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody coming to the Father except by me. Except by me. There is no other way. There is no other means. So that is just my celebration today. And I want to also celebrate, I say, I've told you, I'm, so I'm going to keep saying it every time that I can. Matthew 5, 6, and 7, Jesus sat down and taught his disciples. Now, I, I'm, when we're reading the book of Samuel, starting, Samuel, God say, I will not allow the word of Samuel to fall to the ground. So if Samuel was like that, why would Samuel pray? That's my question to believers in the Lord Jesus. I have to always put that clause because there's so many believers who believe in rocks and stones and other alternative things that they believe in. You know, the believers in the Lord Jesus, he says, Samuel, Samuel was who? Samuel was a, a kind of prophet that God spoke to. He says he will not allow his word to fall to the government. I read that Samuel prayed. Samuel kept praying. Samuel kept praying. When they come to Samuel, he will pray to the Lord. Samuel did, it, uh, oh, America don't kill us, but it's okay. There is light coming in the word of God. And I also, we sing this song, um, prayer is a key, prayer is a key, prayer is a master key. Jesus, that's where I'm going. Jesus, why would Jesus pray? Huh? Son of God, why did Jesus just stand up and begin to decree and declare? And Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed. John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. That's why the disciples of Jesus came to say, as John taught his disciples, you to teach us to pray. Because they saw Jesus pray. Jesus will pray all night. Jesus will pray. Jesus pray, 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 pray. And Jesus said, yes, Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed. Let me say that. Jesus prayed. Did Jesus need to pray? And he was teaching us something. The way to the Father is through prayer. He said, pray without ceasing. Prayer is what we are commanded to do. It's not a suggestion. Pray without ceasing is the word. If Jesus prayed, I have to pray. If Samuel prayed, which I don't do, which of which everybody, any prophet that is working on this earth now was like Samuel. My God. Or was Elijah. Elijah prayed. The Bible says Elijah prayed and there was no rain. Because people just come down to say, oh, Elijah commanded that there was no rain. No, 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 no. They say Elijah prayed fervently. He prayed fervently. Then he came. He, he, he prayed first. We can command. You know what I'm saying? I, I have two series that it's going to start. We have not so learned Christ. And my marriage wife. So let's talk about we have not so learned Christ. My key thinking here. Is decree and declaring spirits. I know, I know, I know. I know you all decree and declare. Yes. I know you all confess and do all that. But is it Jesus say you have heard? Matthew 5, 6, and 7. You all got to read that scripture. Jesus said, you have heard. Jesus said, it has been said, but I say. But I, I, will, keep, I will keep saying this. Jesus said, but I say. The woman at the well came to Jesus. Jesus, our fathers have told us. Jesus said, ah. Oh, that is you, you worship what you know not, but I am telling you the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. So the key thing for us, who am I going to believe? If Jesus said, pray, my apostle, my bishop, my pastor, the world tell me, American pastors are the one that started the decree and declaring and transported it to the rest of the world. And they say, declare, declare. But are they Jesus? Jesus prayed. Samuel prayed. Elijah prayed, and all these people are preaching this decree and declare stuff. Who are they? Are they like Samuel? Are they up to the level of Elijah? Can they command rain? Can they tell the rain not to fall? Can they speak to Ahab? Elijah confronted Ahab. Can they confront their government? Can they or they are, they are sucking up to the government of their country? Elijah confronted Ahab, confronted Jezebel. These are the kind of people that they were. Can they do that? This, this is the scripture that they use and somebody is either you're ready to be delivered or you're not. You know, this is very important because I was talking to my sister, my, my beloved sister about this. We were saying something and then she said it. I was like, stop. That's not what Jesus is saying in that scripture. <clears throat> I got a little time, so I think I can hang on a little bit. Isaiah 45, verse 11. And I know you, you all must have heard the scripture and listen to what the Bible says. 
And I had to talk to my sister about this. Look, but she was like, oh, no, 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 no. I was like, okay, you know what? Forget it. You see that you're ready to follow the Lord, or you're not. You see that you're ready to make your pastor, your preacher, your apostle, or whatever you're following as the earth, as your ultimate, or you want to follow the word of God. Listen, we are, we are entering that time. It is now God or man. You have to make a choice. You have to be like the son of Eliezer, Phineas, that took a stand for God. Say, you know what? If I pray, I'm going to stand for God. So let's read Isaiah. If you have your Bible, that would be great. Isaiah 45. We always say this thing. I'm sure you have heard it. Command, you can command things that will happen. No, God did not tell us that. Let me tell you what the Bible says. This is a scripture, okay? This is not my word. God says the Lord. This is not God says joy. He said, thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker. Will you question me? Or will you command me about my children? But you know how much they've taught this scripture? They have been dead on that. I've been dead on until the Lord gives you light in the word. And you read your scripture for yourself. Don't take a man's word. They come to church on Sunday and take one scripture and land on it. And you yourself don't even open that scripture when you go home. Hashtag be a real Christian. You know, these things make me uh, sometimes make you upset in my spirit. Like, John, how come you were being fooled all these years? Just like I thought I was sharing on Sunday where I was, I was told, put up your hand, reach out your hand now, spread your hand. Money coming to me. Money coming to me right now. Oh, joy, joy, joy. But I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Money ain't like that. There are so ways many money will come. But how many of you have prayed that prayer? <laughs> it's like, hey, you hear me now? Yeah. And I think I had, I had, I had mm, watch out for, we have not so learned Christ. Because I had another incident where an apostle said, oh, they laid it at the apostles' feet. If you want it, if you did, the bigger, the higher the anointing. So the pastor anointing are different. This is, this is, this is how the prophet of Jesus Christ. The, the pastor anointing is, is lesser than the apostle. So if the apostle is talking to you, the, the, when you give to the apostle, the, the blessing will come higher. But something in my spirit that day, I just thanked the Lord. I looked at him. There was another apostle in the building. I said, you, I'm giving my money to you. I took the money. I gave to that other apostle for some reason. But was that even right? Late apostles' feet. And when we look, we have not so learned Christ. When they gave to the apostles' feet, it was for the distribution to the needy in James' life. They did not just bring their stuff and lay it at the apostles' feet. And then that's a prayer, the, yeah, they will talk about all that. They did not just sell their stuff so they will lay at the apostles' feet. The apostles carry it to his house. No. He read the scripture in Acts. It was to be distributed to the needy. So after all of us, everybody, you see them running to the pulpit, putting the money at the apostles' feet. How much of those money went to the needy? How much of those Ah, church. Father, 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 father. You have better receive the liver. But if you want to continue to lay in apostles' feet, continue. Uh, she be like your money, not my money. Don't be my money now. Shoot. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't put my own. Well, let's go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 45. Receive the light. Amen. He says, would you question me? Well, you remember it was 11. Because they, took, they always say, Command me. They always pick that one, but they don't start from verse 11, which says, God says the Lord. God says God, the only one of Israel and his maker. This is God speaking. God is saying, Will you command me about my children? Or are you going to command me concerning the work of my hands? God said, will you command me? But what have they taught us? Oh, command you, this thing to come to pass. Now lie, not scripture. And God began continuing in verse 12. He says, and God is not saying what he did. God says, I made the earth and created man upon it. It was my hands that stretched out the heavens. And I commanded all the work. God, commander. Eh? Ultimate commander. Then they say, you but you with God. God did not ask us to command. You know, this is, not, this is not a very popular thing, but somebody that will receive deliverance, so just receive deliverance today. Deliverance is not when you go and they, they pour, I was watching all my friends pouring all of people's, they were that's and I say, this is not deliverance. Deliverance is in the water. Which kind of deliverance? Beggy. Jesus, help us. Ah, he says, and I command all their hosts. 
I, God still talking, you know, I have aroused him in righteousness and I will make straight all his ways. God in action, the commander, eh? the commander. Let me give you another scripture. Romans 4, 17. This also, I'm sure you have heard, I have used it, been there, done that. Yeah, thank God for the light. He said, that is in the end time, the knowledge of God will flood the earth. Romans 4, 17. This is for somebody. In fact, let me read from verse 16, because sometimes just picking one, not even, not even a whole verse, they pick, you know, when you have a verse, A and B, they pick the B, leave the A. No, read the scripture. Bible says, search the scripture. They testify of me. In Romans 4, 16, it says, that is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of us all. Amen. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Who is that I? God. <laughs> As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed. Talking about Abraham believed in God. Okay, in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence. We just came from Isaiah 45, Bible, Mary, Bible. God calls into existence. Taking us back to January, let there be light and there was light. Because they will tell you, oh, faith colored those things which bring us as they were. No, lie. Read the Bible for yourself. He says, he, God, calls those things into existence. The things that do not exist. He called the fish out of the water. Fish did not exist. The trees out of the ground, they did not exist. No. The stars on the moon and the constellations, they did not exist. Your faith ain't calling nothing. We are supposed to pray. You know, I get sick in my, in my stomach when people are still, and then you say, sometimes we pray, so I release my faith. And I said before, what is faith? Faith is not mystical. Faith is simply your belief. You know, people have faith in stone. That is their belief. People have faith in, in wood. That is their belief. People have faith. There's, there's Islam faith. People have faith in Islam. That is their belief. People have faith in Hindu. That is their belief. People are Buddhist. That is their belief. What do you believe? Who do you believe in? Rock, stone? Wood or the God of the universe, great God. That is faith. That is simply faith. It's not mystical. So you cannot release your faith. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Faith is supposed to come to you by hearing and hearing the word of God. Decree and declare is something from the pit of hell. You know why? It is stopping the children of God from praying. When you and I should be praying, we will not be interceding in the place of supplication. We're standing and commanding and decreeing things. I mean, we want to stand with God now. We want to stand and be like God. What did the devil want? This is the, when I say it's the devil's ministry, this is what the devil wants. The devil says, I want to ascend. I want to be like God. What is be like God? Commanding things to come to pass. Speaking things and they, have, and they happen. Speaking things and they happen. Only God. Bible says, and Isaiah 45 says, I commanded. I did this. I did that. Yo. Open your scripture and read for yourself. Like I said, you will not hear this being preached to you. Go to church on Sunday. You will not hear it being preached to you. You will not hear it anywhere. But it is in the word of God. And we have to make up our mind. That is what I'm celebrating today. That God is bringing light into his word. That God is shedding his light. God say, Come, are you commanding me? God say, I call things to be in existence. I am God. I am God. I can pray. He says, pray without season. We are commanded to pray. Pray always. Jesus said, when you pray, he did not say, when you command the Father. And, you know, I was telling you, I was trying to tell my sister, and she was like, oh, we can command. I said, no, 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 the Bible did not say that. The scripture did not say that. You all have to read the scriptures again. Don't just take what somebody has told you. And I understand, it, it, you know, it, it hurts. It hurts because you believe this for years. See, when I talk about it, David said, creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us? Yes. He hurts when you just feel that, how have I in the world been deceived? Well, yeah, it's simply because I have not read the word of myself. 
So I, I heard the man of God that I, I listened to say, if you have a, a Bible in your darling and you have not read it and you are deceived, you say you deserve to be deceived. <laughs> he said, yeah, you deserve to be deceived because if all you hear is what you are told when you come to church, you got a problem. Or all you hear, even now we are talking, we are on this celebrating Christ. If this is all you hear, you got a problem too. Because after this, yeah, you have to go back and like, hey, let me look at that again. What, 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 what? Yes. Open it for yourself. Read it and pray the Lord to give you this. Listen, God wants to talk to each and every one of us. There is no mediator. Jesus is the only one. He wants to speak to us. He wants to talk to us. So sometimes, yeah, we have to unlearn the, 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 the lies that were being told. Jesus gave us a sign in the end time. And the key thing when they asked him, Jesus, where will this be? How is, do we know? This the first thing he told them. He says, beware that no man. He's not saying angel. He did not say angel. He did not say spirit. No, he says, beware that no man deceive you. So we cannot put any man above the word of God. I'm telling you, I fact check everybody. Now. I don't care who you are. Be Archbishop, be Pope. I don't even listen to Pope anyway. But then, you know, no matter how you want to get your eye up there, we are all children of the most high. I fact check you. I mean, they fact check all the presidents in this country. So why not? I'll fact check you because this is my salvation. This is my soul that is at risk here. I'm going to stand before God and give account. So that is my celebration today. I just am finally, you know, this is part of the we have not sold in Christ that I'm talking about. So when you when you when you say you are not sold in Christ, this is what you're going to be saying. That we have not so learned. I'm just simply going to take Matthew 5, 6, and 7 and show you what this is what Jesus said, and this is what we have been told, and this is what we have grown up with, and this is what we have followed for years. Are you ready? Like Saul refused to repent. So um Samuel told him what was gonna be. He thinking that if you go and meet the media, okay, Samuel, the thing is gonna change. It's not gonna change. Like I always tell my daughter, when they ask me something and I say no, then trading me, they ask me, guys, say, did you did you think that the answer was gonna change? He said the same. That's what happened. God already issued a judgment on, on Saul. The only thing Saul had to do was to repent. He refused to repent. He's thinking, okay, if I go to the medium, bring up Samuel for me, maybe the, the, the gist is going to be different. Uh-uh, it's still the same judgment. It's still the same. So however we go, it's still going to be the same. But we got to be ready to, what do you want to do? Do you want to take the word of God? Or you want to take the word of man above God? You know, I heard something of recent that the pastor was telling the lady, you know, Jack in bed, she now, you know, yeah, it's quoted. Uh, uh, I will show you a level of higher grace. grace. This grace too is from the people here. From the Bible. <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? I will show you a level of higher grace. Higher grace to commit evil. Ah, father, father, my people. Read the word of God for yourself, oh. It is very important and save yourself. In the book of I say, save yourself. As you go to it, it is time. In every war, I will read you. I remember, I will to save yourself. Save yourself. Read the scripture for yourself. And I also want to celebrate the fact that David was okay until you see, you'll be okay until the hand of God upon your life. Then see people turn against you. Even your family will turn against you. Jesus said, I have not come to bring peace. <laughs> When you begin to, when you are smoking and weeding and clubbing and do this, you will get friends. You know, people will help you to help you continue in sin. But the day you say, only next year I come, watch them same people. Ah, your own is too much. You are mother that kid Jesus. You are this, 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 everybody, your family will turn against you and say, what? Well, you'll be like, really? That's how it is. David was okay until the hand of God came upon him. Then see enemy, see enemy see enemy, but he held on because God was with him. One thing is that is true about God. God says, if you stay with me, I will stay with you. If you walk away from me like Saul, you know, I'm where I am. God is walking away. So when you walk away and you turn your back on God, you're turning because it's God, light and darkness. So when you turn your, when we turn our backs on light, you know that darkness is, is now we are facing darkness. Right there, that's how the spirit, the spirit are able to attack Saul anyhow, because he turned his back. If you face God, God will face you, you're facing light, you will see light. But when you turn your back on light, you actually now, we actually now facing darkness. And may we not be in that place like Saul. Repent. One way, one way, one way. 
Repentance is the way. There is no other way whereby we might be saved. Your works cannot save you. Repentance is the way. There is no remission of sin, but by the shedding of the blood. Jesus shed his blood already. Don't tell, don't let anybody tell you, you have to come and kill this, share this, uh, buy this, uh, let's be that. Uh, uh, you just need to repent from your sin, that's all. You are sleeping around and you're married, you just need to stop, that's all. Don't go and think the prophet will prophesy over your life and tell you to read Psalm 100 times. Read Psalm 100 times, you're still, no, no, no. Repentance is the key. <laughs> it's true. You can, they can give you this old decree and declare this 100 times. No, repentance is the key. You're, whatever you're doing, you're stealing, you're killing, you're committing murder, you're gossiping, and you go to your person, they'll give you, say, you, are, you go and decree, uh, decree Psalm 91, 100 times. Oh, what's that Psalm said? Ah, he that does the people of Moshe, shall part of that, yeah, dwell. You hear the word dwell, dwell, dwell. Are you dwelling? You're not dwelling, okay? Yeah, read that Psalm 100 times. It, it, there's evil in my hands, and I don't repent. You think just read, waking up and reading that Psalm 100 times a day, it ain't gonna solve nothing? No. God say, if you come to me, draw close to me, I'll draw close to you. So that's where I'm going to hang up my, my, uh, my celebration today. And I think I posted something about neighbor, and I don't want to talk about that, neighbor and uh, my dear Abigail, Lady Abigail on YouTube. I have a series that I do on Sunday's Reason for Women. That is, that is hit. So if you want to hear uh, about neighbor and Abigail and David, that smart girl, Go to YouTube, it's right there. Abigail, the smart girl, the smart, the lady smart man, lady smart. Mm -hmm. Repent. All right, God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, Sister K, you have something else to just say for us? I know. <laughs> God give us the grace. I God give us the grace to be obedient. <laughs> you see how she puffed Not only you, well, mama, she does. Ah, puffed it out. Eh? This is the puff mama. <laughs> I love my sister. Oh my God. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> grace, grace. May God give us the grace to be obedient. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, Mikey, can you close us in prayer? You. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining with us today and sharing your time. Remember, we are here by the grace of God. We shall be back again on another pulpit hour. So join in, share it, have somebody. Let's just continue to celebrate and publish the word. And um, remember, also open your own Bible, your scriptures, and read it for yourself. Read it for yourself and let the Lord open your eyes to the truth in the word. Listen, those decree and declare, as I just told you, Isaiah 54, Isaiah 45, 11, Romans 4, read the whole, read the whole chapter. You just, uh, you know, just read the whole chapter and you see that God is the one in action. And you take you back to Genesis chapter 1. And then you take you back to where Jesus bent down, took um, a spit and put it in the soil and rubbed it and put an eyeball. Jesus was just trying to tell you almost. I know how to do this. I'm the creator. Creator. Going back to Genesis because he, he formed man out of the earth. And then I saw a pastor. I was, I was seeing something on YouTube. Well, one pastor had his feet. He pulled for her. He pulled for somebody. I'm like, you crazy? And the person is standing right there. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> we want to be God. That is the devil's territory, man. The devil want to be God. I want to be, in fact, the devil is confused. Says, I want to be God. If I want to be higher than God, I want to put my throne above the throne of God. And we see that now. Narcissists. Na, 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 narcissists. 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 We are not God. We are children of God. That's who we are. Let us stay in our place. All right, Michael. Say our prayer. Amen. God, Michael. Say our prayer. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, in the almighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We just want to thank you, O Lord, for bringing us here today. Thank you, O Lord, for your word. Thank you, O Lord, for, for teaching us, O Lord, today, for helping us, O Lord, for guiding us with your spirit, O Lord, through your word. We pray, O Lord, that you help us, O Lord, to be obedient, that you help us, O Lord, to know you for ourselves, O Lord to listen to your word, that we will not just only, only hear your word, you will not just only know your word, but we will also do your word in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, today, O oh Lord, help us, O oh Lord, throughout the week, 
Help us, O oh Lord, through our lives in the year 2021, O oh Lord, to hear you, to obey you, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, my, you're still muted. You're still muted. Yeah, I'm muting. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. God bless you. And congratulations for leading out another day. The Lord give us grace for today to follow him in his word, just as he has said. Jesus said, believe on me as it is written. Not as somebody has told us, the woman at the well, our elder said, our father said, no, Jesus said, amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bye. Bye.